gentlemen, this is the third final part of our video. But I really hope not. I'm hoping to be able to get more interviews with Mr. Pelletieri in the future. But for now, we got to accept what we get. Amen? All right, Joe. Tell me something, Joe. You what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Tell us about your relationship. The world is waiting to hear this. What is your relationship with William Pinson? Chandler well, Grover, Walter Reed. Let's talk. Let's talk about them. Tell well, me about them. Well, as far as Bill Pitson's concerned, I met him down in uh, in Los Angeles at the uh, Los Angeles Prison Club's uh, shows, mm -hmm. and and uh, my friend. Uh, uh, what year was that? Oh, I don't remember what year it was. Forties, fifties. Yeah, probably the fifties. My friend Ralph Hilton was a great admirer of Bill Pensum, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, uh, uh, he was instrumental in starting the National Birmingham Roller Club mm -hmm. in honor of Bill Pensum. Now I'm talking about Ralph Hilton now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a photogra photograph in there of Ralph Hilton and his wife in that in that album. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Bill Pinson was w world known, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. He, of course, he's an Englishman born in, the, in, in and around that black country. Uh, right. And the reason they called it the black country it was a coal mining area. And the, the dust from the coal settled off all over the place, on the buildings, on the ground, and that's the why they called it the black country. Black Hills Country. Yeah. Yep, I remember that's that. That's the reason. That's the reason for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Bill. Bill uh, was the uh, instigator uh, of, of developing the deepest and most uh, sustained role in his birds. The deepest and most sustained role in his birds. Yeah. You hear that, America? Because Joe, for I hear a lot of people talk. And and I and sometimes I just I just want to shut them off. I just heard a guy the other day I was on the phone with one of the and, and they uh, wow so so much controversy around the fact that Bill Pinson had short birds. He he you know well, and all this and that was that's that was really ridiculous. Well, some of them were. I know the Bill uh, the birds that uh, Ralph Hilton got from uh, from Pinson. He he got the shorter ones. Mm -hmm. And he liked those short cobby birds. Mm -hmm. The Pinson birds, some of them were long. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would. It's we're, like, not, we're not talking just in stature. We're talking in terms of uh, the the air. We're talking the air. We're talking. Oh, you're not talking about the size stature. of the birds. Right, right. We're talking in the air. Oh, when you say long, you're talking about deep rolling. Deep, right. Oh, well, yeah, they had deep rolling. No question about that. No question about that. <laughs> Well, he was uh, a lot of the fellows that had uh, deep roll on. Another one was Bob Evans. He was a big mm -hmm. backer of the of the Pencil Roller Club. In fact, he was one of those fellows that instigated the mm -hmm. the, uh, the birds. And he lived over in San Mateo, California. And you knew all these people personally, Joe? Yeah, I was I was over. Uh, you were behind the scenes, man. Well, I happened to be at the in the area at the right time, I guess. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, uh, this fellow Sam Mateo, Bob Evans, uh, I was there one day when he, he must have put up 200 birds in the air, and man, I never seen a display in my life like that. They were rolling all over the place. Mm -hmm. Down through the trees, some of them bounced. Uh, <laughs> it was really something. Uh, Sam Mateo. Yeah. Right across the water from where we are right now, That's the Bay right. Area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I have from the birds I purchased from you two years ago. I have some some bronze wings now, some gold wings now off of that hen that oh, I bought that from right? you and that cock I bought from you. I have some laces off of them. They've thrown me some. Well, well see, so you, you got the opal factor if you got the laces. I got the opal factor. Yeah. I uh, I gave you some birds one time too after you, you bought did. some. You 
did. Yeah, what happened to them? I tried to fly them, and uh, they were doing well. And I had, and the hawks started killing them all. Uh. They started killing them all. And I, you know, and I, I couldn't save them, so I put one of them down, and I bred it. Right? I so, see, I can't let the hawks eat all of them. And the ones I purchased, I, bred, I made sure I bred all of them. So, so now, you know, one thing that the hawk has taught me, don't fly nothing you can't replace. That's right. I want you guys to know that from Kim. If you want to breed the bird, lock right, it up. Right. Don't fly it. Don't fly nothing you cannot replace because you will, you, you know, you will be heartbroken. And that's that's what we're doing. That's really the truth. Yeah, that's the one that's a horrible trick out. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly. He'll grab the one that you want to breed. Yep. Yep. Another thing I found out too, Joe, is if you say if you see a bird coming in in his spin and he's doing so wonderfully well, don't pay attention to him. Go oh, what? Don't pay attention to him because the hawk can see you paying attention to him and he'll pay attention to the bird too. <laughs> <laughs> and before that bird, you know, I put this on everything I know. If you point at, oh man, I can't wait to get that bird in. I'm gonna breed that if he's doing good. That bird never get home. <laughs> Anytime you cover the bird, that's the one the hawk will grab. I'm telling you. That's just a remarkable, but that's the way it is. That's the way it is. And I'm glad I didn't just say it. I'm glad hearing it from you, too, because I truly know that's the story. Yeah. I'm glad I just well, said it. Well, I know that. 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 Well, that's because of the DDT that the, the farmers were using on their fields, and also DT, DDT was used all over. And it uh, caused the eggs to be soft shell and they would break. And uh, uh, you wouldn't get any youngsters. But the hawks. Uh, the uh, hawks were getting that DDT too, and they were, their eggs were breaking, and so the hawks hawks weren't raising any youngsters, so there was no problem around here. I can remember when I was a kid, there was only uh, a uh, hawk here. Was the old man that had that apartment house, he flew rollers off the top of that uh, apartment house. He had two kids, fifty birds each, and one of the hawks he said it was a goss hawk. Which I, I, I don't know if it was or not, but uh, uh, there weren't many hawks around in those days. Wasn't many at all. Uh, I've never even seen one but a red tail. That was about the only one in the which was not a problem all the years I flew. See, I flew from 1965 to like 1973. And then I flew again from 19. 74 to 1983. I didn't really have a problem at all. Well, you're in a bad area now because you're up in the... Oh, I'm in a bad area now. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. up there in the hills where they're all breeding oh, yeah. and living in those trees up there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you probably have... Uh, uh, I don't know if you get any peregrines. I get peregrines. I get I get winter, I get super, 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 Huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we get owls too. Yeah, yeah, we got owls. Yeah, but they're not, they're yeah, nocturnal. They, yeah, they, they nocturnal. I, I don't know, just, they, they don't really do anything. Oh yeah, 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 we got, we got, well, you know, in the hills, we got some, a lot of natively wild creatures. Those bobcats, you know, possums. Well, you I got everybody got raccoons. Badgers and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Moles and whatnot. And they, in fact, I had a had a, a one living in the garage here. A badger? No, not a badger, but a raccoon. Uh, nice. Mole? Huh? What's it? Long. Possum. Possum. 
possum. Yeah. Set up housekeeping in here. Yeah. I had to I had to catch them and get and take them out and get rid of them. You know, yeah, they eat the birds too. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was after the birds or not, but I didn't yeah. want to be in the garage. No, I, 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 you know, like you said, up there we get them too. I had a I had a pair of them, uh, but they don't really do a lot as long as I keep my cages closed up. If they, if they find a way in, they do. But uh, the raccoon will actually try and break in. Yeah, coon will do that. You know, he actually just worked on the wire. Well, they can gain, they're strong. They can oh, get, man. They can get in practically anywhere. I had them go in my cage, you know, uh, not long ago. They got me for like about four stock birds. Well, cats are another problem. Okay, here we go on the male side. I'm going to show you a few males that I have. And uh, these are some of the males. A lot of them that I stocked because they were good. They're deep control spinners. All those that you see without a band is deep. Uh, who's new would be this bird right here. And that bird name is Hard as Nails. Is that what he is? Hard as Nails. Okay, then uh, here's another one. This is off my blue back. I never named that bird. I never named this bird. This bird is good for six poles. Did a few hard landings. Came in really young. Really exceptional span. Really exceptional speed. Um, say around 300 feet. That's what he gave. Okay. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, this bird right here. This bird right here, his name is the Long Ranger. That is the Long Ranger. Uh, he's good for about 250 feet. The thing is, is he won't even spin down low. He'll just coast. He don't even spin unless he's like at least, I don't know, say, 400 feet. Then he'll give you something. He'll give you 200 of that, maybe 250, and then he'll just coast like a, like a glide, like a, like a, like a homer. His name is the Long Ranger. You'll also see him later on in the video. We got some good footage of him. So basically, here's one of my white bars. This bird was so unique that I just stopped it. Uh, like I said, I'm doing a lot of color breeding this year. So this was one of the birds that um, that I've been breeding for. Um, as you know, white bars. We don't obtain a lot of spin, but I put a lot of spin in these white ones, and I guarantee them to do 100 feet or better. This is one of them. I'm just stopping because he's so unique. White bars are pink, big. Okay? Alright. As you can see, a lot of other birds. Here's a cream that is, had a very unique color. And I decided to just stop because it was so unique. It's got a white side and a, and a cream side. It's really, really a strange like bird. I gotta turn it around for you. Let's see here.